Hi, welcome back to ODE YouTube channel and to another kind of long video without writing samples. Just showing you a collection overview of my pens inspired by Parker Duffold. And when I talk about this, I think we need just to check what is a Parker Duffold and then show you the inspirations. I will go for this one. This is the Parker Centennial Dufold Big Red. This is a recent edition of the modern version of the Parker Dufold. So let's call it modern. There are several variations in cap bands and many details, but let's call this the modern Parker Dufold. And I will start by the pens that are inspired on this new design of the Dufold. And let's start. I'm not starting with a chronological order or anything like that. I'm just showing you the pens that I have. And so in my collection I have the Moonman M600. This is the checkerboard, checkerboard pattern which was also made for the Parker Dufold. It is a, an acrylic that is created like this, which is an interesting thing. And the Moonman now it's not called Moonman anymore, the brand, but at this time these pens for Moonman, the M600, had the ballpoint clip, two cap bands and a Schmidt nib and they are cartridge converter pens. So I have one Moonman M600. Later they released the Moonman M600S, which is basically the same pen, except it now has the arrow clip more similar to a Parker Dufold, and also the, the same cap bands, and they have now a Moonman nib, which could be all gold colored or all silver or by color like this one and for and this Moonman M600S was made in several finishes I don't know by heart the name of all the finishes I don't think it is important but let me just show you some of the finishes I have this is a very interesting one so I have several finishes for this pen. Another one, another one. I think I don't need to say that the Parker Dufold design is one of my favorites, so I have several Parker Dufolds and I also have several pens inspired by it. So, these are the Moonman M600, M600S. Let's take a few out of the way. Otherwise, I won't be able to show you all the pens I have to show you today. And let's go for another one. And this is the Jin Hao Centennial or Century or 100. It's called in several ways. So what does this pen have? It has a ballpoint clip like this. It has the Jin Hao logo there, Jin Hao logo on the medallion on the cap, which doesn't happen with the, the Moonman. It has a large cap band instead of two, and then it has a Jin Hao nib. It, has a, it is a cartridge converter, and this one has an engraving on the barrel that is similar to the engraving of the real. Parker Dufold. So it is a close, close inspiration. Uh, it is available on some pens, this engraving, but not in all of them. And this was released in several colors and trim colors. So I have quite a few Jin Hao Centennial pens. And yes, I know they are too many, but I really, really like this design. They are also available in these very interesting materials, also with interesting nibs, 
this one has ink. This is a Fude nib, which is bent upwards. I didn't remember it, this one had ink. Oops, let me just align it a little bit. And it was also available like this with, with the same kind of checker pattern, pattern that you see here on the Moonman. This one has a different color, but maybe if I chose the same color for both, maybe the material is the same. I'm not sure. So this was available like this also. So lots of variety with this pen. Let me take the duplicates out of the way. And let's go to another one. The, the other one is a more is a stranger thing because it is sold as a Jin Hao, but is marked with JD and it has the hero clip and it's not as well made as the Jin Hao. I like yellow pens, so I got this one. And the cap doesn't unscrew easily, it has a Jin Hao nib, but every part is not compatible, so I would say this is kind of an imitation of the imitation of the Parker Dufault. So this is an imitation of the Jin Hao uh, Jin Hao Centennial. I would say that this pen looks amazing, but it is not that well made. But it is interesting because it is yellow and I like yellow so I had to buy it. And when I bought it, and that's the part that, uh, let's put the yellow here, that's the part that annoys me a little bit, is that when I bought this pen I thought it was sold as a Jin Hao, but it is not. And so I was expecting something else and it was this, so not glad that it was sold, which means there's no problem to buy this pen instead of the Parker Dufold, but I wouldn't like to see this pen sold as Parker Dufold and then it was not, but it is clearly a Jin Hao. This one is not clearly the something that it is, JD or something like that, but it, it was advertised as a Jin Hao doesn't say Jin Hao anywhere, except on the nib, and I think that is misleading and I was not happy about that, but I decided to keep the pen and show it. And it is always interesting material for a pen channel. The next pen I want to show is another Moonman, and by this time it was strange period, because Moonman is no longer Moonman, it is Majon, but this pen was in between, so it is not marked as Moonman. And this one has the hero clip, but it has a slightly different configuration because it, it, it has a, a cap with the same shape, overall shape, but more straight there, flat top, nothing on the top, these nice stripes, but it doesn't have any cap band, but it has two cap bands on the barrel, one like this, Yes, the other one usually is on the on the cap, not on the barrel. And you unscrew, there is no more, there are no more rings for it. It's a cartridge converter pen and this one takes a Bok nib. It's not a Moonman branded nib. It is an interesting pen in terms of overall design, but in the end not that exciting. The following pen that I'm showing you, it's a, it's a pen that I find a little bit more exciting. It is transparent, it is roughly the same kind of pen as the Parker Dufold, but when we talk about the modern Dufold, we are talking about a cartridge converter pen. This one is not a cartridge converter pen. This is a pen BBS 355, and it is this one is transparent, it could be of other colors, this pen has an interesting feature, which is the filling system. So this pen is really a piston filler, but the way it works is different because you have this rod inside, you need to unscrew it like this, you put it here, you screw it to the 
uh, to the rubber gasket of the of the piston and then you can put it down you operate the piston upwards the pan is full now and then you go back and put it down what it means with this pan is if you had the piston mechanism integrated the piston would stop here and you only have half of the barrel full of ink in this case you can have the whole barrel full of ink because the, the piston gas gasket is up here it doesn't take extra space down there and the space is only taken by this rod that moves this is an interesting pen it uses the same filling system as the conid that is very well known many people say this is a copy of the conid and it shouldn't be allowed and so on but actually this is a very very old i don't remember now at this moment how old this mechanism this patent is i think around 100 year, years old or more so there are no rights about this and they just used an old american patent the next pen that I want to show is a pen, I have no name for it, and it is a pen that uh, was released in some magazines that we bought a magazine each week or each two weeks, and it came with a pen. So I found this an interesting pen, it has a different nib, like this, it is clearly a Chinese pen, it is a cartridge converter, it's not... An amazing pen but it is interesting also with a cap band cap band there uh, a band on the, on the end of the barrel so it has some similar features overall and it has little butterflies on the metal parts the next pen I want to show you is again a yellow pen but it's available in other colors and this is the Ving Sung 670. It is a pen that goes for the same kind of uh, look, but this is more, this resembles more an older version of the dual fold. From the modern era of the dual fold, there was a version that is more similar with this, with two cap bands in these kind of proportions. This clip is kind of a spade clip, it also has a logo there. The Ving Sung logo, you take this out, you have a Ving Sung big nib. And it is a good pen, has a writing instrument, it has a nice nib, but the material sounds a little cheap when compared with maybe the Jin Hao Centennial. Not this one because this is again a little cheap and I don't really love that much the material. I, look, I love the looks of this movement, but not really the feel of the material. Then we go for the, the older pen of all of those, which is the Kaigolu 316. It was available and it was released in limited colors, three colors. This is one of those, the amber. It, it has a very beautiful material with lots of depth, I think you can see that. And it is a very heavy pen with a kangaroo nib, which I think means kangaroo, because there is a kangaroo there, there is a kangaroo here, upside down, on the top. So it has a medallion on top, it has the clip, which has a straight shape, it has two rings, but with a black part inside, and the pen is quite good, very heavy, uh, or heavier, because it has lots of metal. It is a cartridge converter pen, but this is really a good writer. And I would um, suggest to try a Kaigalu 316 if you like pens with wet nibs. And these are wet nibs on the Kaigalus. I also have another one, this is a modern version which had different colors now, they, are, they changed the colors but the rest of the aspect is the same, so this is the Kaigalu 316 also, and there was also, 
released recently, the Kaigalu 316A, which has some differences. It, uh, it resembles more this pen, in a way, because it doesn't have the black top and bottom, and not the black section, the same kind of nib with the kangaroo, but it has these differences. The, the material is very beautiful, it has a cap band that has a scroll work there, it reminds also more of this one, instead of two small cap rings, and it is a cartridge converter pen, it doesn't have extra metal parts, so it's much lighter than the regular Kaigalu 316, and I think this material is very, very, very attractive. It, you really like, at least I do, when I have this pen inked, I like to look at it, just to have it in my fingers and to roll it to see the differences. So let's take one of the 316s and left here, left, only the 316 and the 316A. No, let's keep the yellow. I'm keeping this as yellow as I can, just for fun. Another pen is a German pen and it is the Divine Design Eyedropper. And it is a pen that's very similar to a Parker Dufold, the same kind of blind cap, which is not a blind cap really, just an end piece. It has a cap pen, it has a clip and the top part, which is not black here, the barrel, it is transparent, the the section is the same material as the cap and the end. It has a Yovo nib, so it's fun, we have several nib makers, the general ones like Schmidt and Bock and Yovo, then we have the Kaigalu, one unknown here, we have the Moonman, Jinhao, Pen BBS, so lots of variety. This pen is called Eyedropper because it comes with a, no ring there, in the box it comes with um, a pipette or uh, eyedropper to fill the pen as an eyedropper and this pen really works well as an eyedropper. When I reviewed it, I eyedroppered it, but it also comes, and I think that's nice, it comes also with a converter, so if you don't like eyedroppers, which is my case, I prefer to use it as a cartridge converter pen. It has a nice material, it is on the light side, but it is a big size pen, very comfortable, and you can see this is one of the biggest of them all. Next pen, and I don't know if this one will fit on the frame, is another eyedropper pen, and this is eyedropper only. And this is the Opus 88 Demo. It is an interesting pen. It has a greyish, greenish color, the same kind of style. Ballpoint clip, black end, black end, black or darker section. Then you have a Yovo nib branded Opus 88. And then this pen is an eyedropper filler. You just unscrew this, you put ink inside and it takes all these of ink. You can, it also has this, which is a shut off valve that you can unscrew to allow more ink to go into the nib or shut this completely and this way there will be no ink flowing to the nib and that is a good thing when you have eyedroppers to avoid uh, leakage which sometimes happens with eyedropper pens. This is a nice, very nice feature, I think it is um, absolutely need, needed for uh, eyedropper pens. It has no cap band and it is, I think, the largest pen of them all that I showed so far. The next pen I want to show you is a pen that is kind of the opposite to this one. It is a pen from Italy and it is the Filcao Mini. It says there Filcao. I also reviewed this pen. It has an interesting material. It has an interesting nib with the F for Filcao reminding us the F for Facebook. And it is a cartridge converter pen. I'm afraid this material may have 
some shrinkage problem because it's all much tighter than it used to be so you put a cartridge here you can't fit a converter because this is really really a small pen but when you look to the overall design the only difference is that this one doesn't have the end part there but it has the clip the band and it is a very small pen like this it's almost impossible to write but when you post it you can write with it comfortably now <laughs> this pen is really really small now let's go to another pen which is the Pilot Lucina from Japan, which is an interesting pen. I think it has the overall shape of a Parker Blue Fold, a little bit more streamlined, but the same elements, black ends, black section, the ring, the ball clip. I think it's very similar. Also a cartridge converter pen. And then you have a steel Pilot nib, which is very, very good. This is available in four colors. I have the yellow, I have the red, and that's it. Let me take the red away. Then we go to American pens, and I have a Conklin Duragraph in forest green, which is a beautiful green. It actually reminds me a little bit of this Jin Hao. And this is the Conklin Duragraph. It has an interesting nib. It is a model that, in my opinion, is clearly inspired by the Dufault. I think this nib with the crescent is very interesting. It's getting a little bit dull there. Okay, no problem. Um, the, the nib is, is beautiful. It has Conklin there on top. The What you can see here is that the proportion of this black top of the cap is a little different, you have the cap band, you have a ring there, you have the black part, black section, and it is also a cartridge converter pen. So, another interesting item from United States, Conklin Duragraph. And now we go to Italy, where from where we have two pens. One is the wonderful in my opinion, oops, wonderful, Netuno 1911 Black Sands. It says there Netuno 1911. It's a very interesting pen. It has a different design because the way the clip is put here is a little different. It has two rings there and it has two metal elements here, which will remind us of this one. And this is a very interesting pen. It has a Netuno nib, this one. Uh, the coating peeled away. I still need to try to clean it better, but I didn't have the opportunity to do that and I actually don't want to to deal too much with the nib because the nib is amazing. I have a replacement nib for this one because it lost the coating, but the nib is so good that I don't want to use the other one. It is a cartridge converter pen also, but this one you can use it by unscrewing the barrel or unscrewing the end piece, so really here a blind cap, and you can operate it as if it was a piston filler. So this is the very nice Netuno 1911 Black Sands. Another thing that you can see this pen is that the cap is much shorter when compared with the rest of the barrel. And another pen from Italy, which I like a lot, the Tibaldi Perfecta Rich Black, which is really rich black pen with ebonite feed, a steel nib that is marvelous with the Tibaldi Eagle. And it is a, a pen that is roughly inspired in the Parker Blue Fold, but it has no cap pens. It has some knurled elements here. It has this part like a blind cap, and this was used to be originally the vintage model. This is a modern model, but the vintage model used to be a safety pen. So when you did that, it would operate the nib inside or outside, and in this case, it's done like this. It is kind of not so good design because when you do that, it's very hard to unscrew 
What we can say it, 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 is that it doesn't have a section. The section is just this little part. But besides, from that you can hold the pen whenever, wherever you like, because it's very comfortable and thick everywhere. It's just a little bit messy when you're trying to put ink inside because you will probably touch the feet or the nib with your fingers. Now, these are the pens that remind me of the modern Parker Blue Fold. Now I want to go, and I won't have any room to show them, but I will put them on top, I think. I want to show you the another design of the Parker Blue Fold, which was the Parker Blue Fold the British Dufault, these were made in England, later than the, the vintage Dufault from the, six, from the 50s and 60s or something like that. And these pens are like this, cigar shaped with a little jewel there, with the arrow clip cap band, and they have a, an aerometric filling system. At least this version. There are also some others which are button fillers or aluminium fillers which are a kind of, of button fillers also. So this is a Parker Dufold, a British Dufold, and I have one pen that in my opinion is quite similar. It is this Taj, which is an Indian pen that has a clip that reminds us the Parker clips. It has a band, it has a jewel on top, nothing on the bottom, and the pen is like this. Let me show you the nib. It is an interesting pen. It is an eyedropper pen, so you just fill it with ink and write with it. No filling system. And Let's go to the last two, and to show you the last two, I want to go back and show you the vintage Parker Dufold. It's like this, it was made in many sizes, this is the lady size, it doesn't have a clip, it has a ring on top. You unscrew it and you have the nib, then this is the, the, the regular shape of this model of pen. The nib on the US one is not completely perfect, but this is how you get them. There are big versions and small versions. The big versions are as big as the, the, the current version of the Dufold. So this is a vintage Parker Dufold. And inspired in this vintage Parker Dufold, I have two pens. One is this amazing that you have seen probably here in the channel, the replica of a Parker Dufold by Chris Thompson, made of solid copper, 128 grams, very, very heavy, with a gold Parker nib and with a replica nib of a Parker and it is a button filler or a cartridge pen, as you prefer, made of solid copper, very, very heavy and on the barrel, maybe I cannot show it to you, there, there is an engraving that I cannot show you, but it is an engraving that replicates the original dual-fold engraving. There, I think you can see a part of it. And on the bottom of that engraving it says replica, because this is really a replica of a senior size Parker dual-fold without a ring on the cap. This was my option to ask for it like this. This is Chris Thompson, he is a man on the United States that made these pens. Uh, you order them specially and he would make the pen for you. I chose this one without a cap band and I'm very happy with this pen. I don't think he makes pens anymore. And the last pen for this very long video is this little thing, which is a really good copy of a Parker Dufold, but it is a Caveco U51. As far as I understand, this clip may not be original, it should be a ballpoint clip. This is another Caveco clip, and you have here the nib of the pen, 
and can I show it to you? It seems to be springy. I didn't use it yet to the time I'm making this video. So this is another interesting pen with the same kind of overall design of the Parker Dufold. So if you ask me, yes, Parker Dufold really did make a big impression in the pen world and created lots of pens inspired by them. I have to say that I also have a couple of Schiffer no-nonsense that are inspired on Schiffer flat tops and discussion can go if Schiffer flat tops are inspired or not by the Parker Dufold because it's kind of a vintage discussion also I decided not to include those here because I think they follow a slightly different path but this is my selection of the pens that are similar to Parker Dufault's. I have all the other color variations here on my left side and yes, too many pens, I need to work on this someday. But I really like this kind of design. So, this is all I had to show you today. I hope you enjoyed this long video just showing you pens. Maybe this may be helpful for you to have some inspiration and to decide which pens do you want to buy next. I hope it was helpful and I hope to meet you here on the channel soon. So, bye!